Good morning, my friends. It's Wednesday, November 23rd, and I'm here with you at the rising of the sun. My cat is wandering around, stretching, and I have with me this picture of a geyser by Doug Eng. I would love to have studied more geology, but the, the layers of earth on this planet, the, the stories that, that are told in the soil and the ground are beyond fathoming. We bear our history on our bodies and the earth bears its history on its body. Just going to Israel and looking at the archaeological digs tell us so much, but beyond that, the millennia, the ice age, the, the layers upon layers of different kinds of soil and the richness of places like this tell us stories of this planet and its age and wisdom, its beauty. Remember that these are the last days before the Advent comes. So we are finishing the year this week. And it's no coincidence that the lectionary has us in the final of the prophets, not the very last, which is Malachi, but Zechariah. We are in the prophet Zechariah listening to this prophecy about enemies coming to Jerusalem to destroy Judah and Jerusalem, but how they will not be able to do that and their horses will be struck blind and and they won't be able to lift the city and finish the job and the people of Israel and Judah will destroy them. But in their victory, the people of Jerusalem will be given what Zechariah calls grace and graciousness. They will have compassion on those that have been defeated and upon the dead. They will walk around the city and look at their enemies' bodies and cry as if they have lost their own child. What a fascinating vision. We're used to these prophets saying either your city's gonna be wiped out or your city's gonna be saved. But this time Zechariah says, yeah, you're gonna be saved, but you're gonna feel bad about it. Because in war there are winners and losers. And that in the end is not really what God wants. God wants us to be at peace, to be compassionate with one another, to live in harmony. And when we fight and when we're at war, it breaks God's heart. So even though your city is saved, if you love God, you're gonna walk around looking at these human beings that have died and weeping. I think about Ukraine a lot. What a shame, what a shame this is. That, we, that they have to fight it all, that they had to be invaded. What do we do with, with the wickedness of the human race, with our inability to compromise? How can we mourn our indeficiencies as if crying for the death of our own children? And maybe somewhere in that grief, there might arise a different way of doing things. Reading the Hebrew scriptures is such a great way to prepare for the coming of Christ because these prophets, they love God so much and Israel and Judah love God so much, but their vision of always fighting and winning battles just isn't enough. Even when they win, it's still tragic. Jesus had to come to show us another way. There has to be another way. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for bringing us in safety to this new day.
to this beautiful earth and this precious life that you have given us. I give thanks today for my parishioner, Bob Hill, who walked the Santiago de Compostela with almost two million steps and arrived there yesterday morning. I ask that you would bless the sick today, Lord Christ, that you would bless those who are dying, those who grieve as the holidays approach. I ask that you would guide every one of us, the lonely, the hungry, the addicted and mentally ill, those who are trying hard to serve you. Help us each day to wake up to a fresh vocation from you, to do work that you place before us, and to let go of those things that you know are not within our control. Bless this earth, Lord. Bring us peace. Show us new ways of living as a human race, of honoring this planet and one another. Show us your way of peace, Lord Jesus, your way of self-sacrifice, that we may know you. This we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.